Hey folks, it's John from A's for Alcoholic. Today's podcast is a little bit different and I just wanted to give you a little preface and a little context. We had our guest on and our very dear longtime friend Coda and during the recording, which is often it's easy to forget when you're talking to friends that you're recording, he had mentioned that he'd started drinking very small bits of wine with dinner extraordinarily infrequently. I think he said something like every few months. Um, and I didn't go into detail with him about it. Uh, Jerry and I were both in shock as it was the first time that we had heard anything about it. And um, I had been agonizing about it for the last few days about whether to release it, whether or not, whether to cut that part out. But, you know, he was open and honest about it. And um, if we are to practice what we preach, everyone's got to go their own way and they've got to do their own thing. And the program that I prescribe to, the program, the same program that Jerry prescribes to is not going to work for everybody. And shame and admonishment doesn't really help an alcoholic, let alone a friend. Um, and I've talked to Jerry and I've talked to Coda separately. And, you know, it's, uh, it's messy, complicated stuff. And I think that it's best to just present it as it is rather than cut it out, delete it, or pretend it didn't happen. Um, so I just wanted to give you folks a little bit of context as, as listeners, as people who look for things in our conversations that might be helpful in your sobriety or dealing with your alcoholism or dealing with your addiction, that one, it's not something that Jerry and I would condone or suggest to anybody asking for help. And that's really the thing, right? If you're not asking me for help, if you're not looking to me for help, then it's none of my goddamn business. <laughs> and and that's a hard thing to remember. And that's a hard thing to put into practice. So I think it's important. This is just part of the process. This is part of our experience. And so this is part of the podcast. And we're going to go into it further next week. Jerry and I are going to talk about it a little bit, our feelings and our experience of the last week, as we always do. So that being said, when somebody's on the podcast and we're sitting here and he brings up drinking wine, um, then you know and you have a little bit of context as to how this came about and why this came about and that this is not something that we had thrown out there without thinking about it and talking about it. Um, I respect you all and I appreciate that you listen and I'm wholly grateful that that people are getting something out of this. You know, we've always said that we started this thing just to figure our own shit out. And if it's been able to help somebody, then amen. So thank you for listening. Thank you for being here. And thank you for, for being a part of this strange trip. So without further ado, here's Kay is for knowledge of self. A is for Alcoholic is a program about recovery. My name is John and I'm an alcoholic. And my name is Jerry and I'm an alcoholic. Join us as we go through the alphabet of alcoholism one letter at a time. But yeah. The buttons are optional, dude. It's an option. You don't need to button that shit. You just... Right? Yeah. I mean, that's what the kid said too, because the shirt is really, really long. And I was like, man, but that, you know, it's on the clearance rack. It's not like I got to a choice of a, a smaller size. And um, I said, what do you think? Like, is this too long? Like now I'm asking the the 20 year old skate shop kid with green hair. Like, what is he? He's like, no, nah, man, you don't even, you're not even going to button that thing up. Like, I don't think yeah. you're supposed to. <laughs> I yeah, was like, yeah. No, I was like, had it right. <laughs> I was like, you got it, Luis. Sold. Like, that's all I needed to hear, you know, in the mirror. So yeah, I mean you rock you can rock a wife beater under there too, man, mm -hmm. and just leave it all the way open. Like, you know, there you go. Right. That that is some serious Miami, Miami Vice style, you know. It does feel a little uh, Scarface, doesn't it? Yeah, Scarface, <laughs> Miami Vice in that era for sure. 
that kid was just trying to get you out of there because he was like <laughs> waiting for you to ask him if you wanted to see your van dude <laughs> <laughs> he was super cool Luis hooked me up with the i gotta buy one get one on some lakai skate shoes too i needed some new red shoes for work so You're killing it dude that's now great. I'm a 44 year old man with two pairs of skate shoes and a hawaiian shirt yeah, yeah. Welcome yeah. To my yeah. <laughs> yeah um so welcome to the big show for those of you who uh, are confused already we um a is for alcoholic is here and um we're joined today by our good friend coda and bam, for bam, those bam. For those of you who don't, um, who aren't familiar with Coda in the uh, AS for Al Alcoholic, uh, what do we call it? Cinematic universe. universe? Yes. Cinematic universe. Yeah. <laughs> um, he's an old friend of ours. Um, we, well, he's an old friend of mine. He's an old friend of Jerry's. You guys have known each other since what, 15? 16 uh, 17 16 yeah, 17, 17 something like that it was near the end of high school actually mm -hmm. i think i was out of high school i think i was 18 jerry was like 16 or 17 yeah which reminds me jerry like a, a demo sent me this little video clip of like uh, i think i was probably like right around that time it was like a downtown saturday i night. saw it no it was oh, at the do? yeah it hermy herm guzman put it on um facebook it was the oh, spray was can cool. symposium in 94 dude wow yeah, that's crazy. It was you and Josh Bashad and like Jason Mashburn. All yeah, Jason, Ma I couldn't figure out who it was either because the video yeah. was kind of blurry. And, and I, I I texted Josh. I was like, who is that? And he was like, it's Jason Mashburn. And as soon as he said it, I was like, oh, that's and that fair. Is. Yeah, there's at the yeah, end. Oh, like, uh, that's John. It's that old '90s. It's all of us as teenagers. Like Coda looks the same, pretty much. It's Coda <laughs> just like moping. I see. I wrote it on Instagram. I'm like, look at Coda just like sulking on a curb, dude. Oh. And then like Gary Hickey's in it. Our friend, our shared mutual friend Gary, who's like a really well-known chef, I guess down here in Tucson now. But he's in it like cocky as fuck, eating a sandwich, looking like Sid Vicious, like. <laughs> Yeah, I don't crazy. know. It is super crazy, dude. Yeah, um, I don't your know. Your kids trip me out. Yeah, it did trip me out, man. I was mm -hmm. just like, wow, there's, there's, a, there's a, you know, there's some punks right there. Some dude, we were jerks, dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I, I think I met Coda. I guess I was twenty or twenty-one, so you would have been twenty two or 23. Yeah, so summer, summer of like 1998 that. was that that summer. And, uh huh. 1998. And I just remember because I had met Jerry a couple of years previous and he brought you back. It was like, yeah, I'm going back to, to Eugene and you should come up with us. And I don't know what the impetus for that trip was or if you were just like, I'm fucking done with Arizona. Oh, Let's yeah, no, that that was definitely it. I, I was. Yeah, for sure. That seems to Not be a general What's assessment that? is just people are like, I'm fucking done with Arizona. I got to get out. Yeah, at I least think, I think everybody kids. does that, you know, um, who lives here and then um but everybody also comes back you know mm -hmm. whether it's once or twice or multiple times like like myself you know i just you know for whatever reason i just keep coming back here um again and again uh glutton for punishment you know i just i uh, but i remember the night vaguely and maybe you can fill in some pieces where you went out with us and um What was that? Who was that? My brother-in-law, they all just got home from camping. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and um, we went out and we were drinking and we were partying and we kept going. And I just remember you being very quiet and kind of like just checking things out, but you stayed the course for the entire night. Yeah, yeah, I like, remember that night. Really? There's pictures, the, you know who has a bunch of pictures of that night, who sent a couple of pictures was uh, Stephen Schwabe. Yeah. Has a bunch of pictures of that night. Like we're all in the parking lot at Safeway buying donuts in 40s, like at like six in the morning or whatever it was. Mm -hmm. And then we went under, we were in the little bike path in the underpass and we were eating donuts and drinking 40s on the underpass at like seven in the morning that next morning. And that was and the first night that we met butte. you. What's that? That was our first Yeah, that first night together? night. It was Ryan Party was with us also. It was Ryan Party. And we walked up to, we walked up a, like a, is it Skinner's Butte? I forget that. The view. one downtown? The, it's probably yeah. the short one. Yeah, the one downtown. Yeah. It was, but it's the one that that's Spencer's. The river, though. Yeah, yeah, that's Spencer's. Yeah, it's the one downtown. Yeah. Huh. And it was, yeah, we walked up that butte in this neighborhood and we watched the sunrise and Stephen was all 
like on acid and I thought he was going to fall off the cliff because there was like a big cliff right there and yeah it was really crazy I remember that yeah that was that night that was the first night and like we we hung out like daily after that like we right. were to friends after that or like mm -hmm. Jerry you, I mean you were like yeah let's go we got to go to the boys house dude we got to go to the boys house and good it's because they party dude the dude <laughs> we we're staying with didn't party and I knew John and them would fucking <laughs> It let us it do whatever some we want. Shit. Yeah, dude. Yeah, no, that's yeah. We, we were staying with Adam Babkeys, remember? Yeah. And his mm -hmm. girlfriend who was yeah. like, she was not happy that we were there. Like, no, dude. Was it was this like, little fucking 500 square foot apartment and me and Coda's nasty ass sleeping in the spare bedroom to stinking yeah, the place dude. up with beer farts and cigarettes. And, and then oh. Walter, Walter started hanging around more because we were there and Walter yeah. was always fucking shit up there. I mean, yeah. So like it was just a bad deal for her all around. Just Walter rolling in in like <laughs> knee socks, cutoffs with like pre-made mojitos in a Ziploc bag, just some weird Walter shit. Yeah, and, like, I remember he was going to culinary school or something at the time mm -hmm. too. So he was always trying to whip up something to eat, and it always ended up being gross and getting everybody sick and shit. Like, so yeah. can I, I? I I've got a very yes. So he came over the other night. I saw him, and he's doing well. Yeah, Good. he came in in his uh, his uh, railroad overalls. Yeah, of course. And he brought me some uh, crab bisque in a little plastic container that he had made. Mm -hmm. And I was very, you know, and I don't, I don't really eat a lot of crab. And I was like, Oh, okay, so I made it yesterday. And it was pretty tasty. But I don't know that it sat very well. I maybe I just wasn't used to it. I mean, I don't know yeah. what it was. And I don't want to I mean, I'm very grateful that he brought me some bisque, but well, yeah, bisque is really, I mean, it's really rich stuff. If he makes it like, mm -hmm. you know, restaurant style, it's going to have lots of cream and lots of butter. It's going to be, you know, I mean, bisque is sort of the, I mean, it's a really rich type of thing. If you're, if you're a little bit lactose intolerant, it may kind of mess with you a little bit. And I think that's, that's probably what happened. He put some but... Grand Marnier in that shit, dude. <laughs> probably. <laughs> so, yeah. So, I mean, I've known, so I've known Coda since 98 and Jerry's yeah. known him since like 92, it's right? 93. Like that, 93. Yeah. He's been around for a long, long time with us, um, knows the ins and outs and probably, I mean, obviously we've all got, you know, plenty of stories, but, and, you know, Coda just recently celebrated three years sober i called right i called him up or i texted him and i i said hey aren't you celebrating an anniversary here or something this month and he's like oh shit it's yeah i didn't even i didn't even remember it until john texted me it was really, really funny, yeah no i i just like i spaced it and it was it was the day it was like the 21st which would have been you know the day that i crashed my car and as soon as he texted me he's like yeah you got a you got a three year coming up don't you like really soon and I was like, uh, oh, yeah, it's today. Today, three years ago, is when I got all hammed and crashed my car. <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> Yeah, it's... <sighs> but um, what is it? I mean, isn't that like a kind of a cool feeling that not that you forgot it, not that we should forget these things, but that life can kind of go on and it doesn't have to encompass your daily thoughts? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I probably would have remembered it like that day or the next day or something, because mm -hmm. I usually do. But the fact that it kind of escaped me um, actually sort of caught me a little bit by surprise. But yeah, it did. It did kind of feel like, yeah, that's that's actually the way that I want it to be. You know, mm -hmm. I don't you know, I mean, as far as as my whole trip goes or whatever with the with the recovery and being sober and all of that, like I, I, I sort of tend to um not necessarily try to forget it, but, but I just sort of, it's, it's definitely like never um, at the very front of my mind anymore, which is a good thing. I think like, that's yeah. kind of where I want it to be. You know, I, I don't, I don't, uh, I kind of like the fact that it's, you know, on the back burner or whatever, like I'm just living my life now. And, you know, it's not something that I think about or dwell on like all the time, you know, it's something that just, is there and it'll always be there but like it's not it's not first and foremost all the time like it was at first you know at first mm -hmm. it was probably that first six months of course i think it was just and i think that's for for anything really it's going to be you know it's going to be right there at the front like most of the time but but yeah, yeah i mean i like the fact that it's not you know that you can feel normal <laughs> in some yeah, aspects. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I guess that's part of it. But um, yeah, 
Um, but but yeah. the, I, when, when I did realize it and I was like, oh man, three years, like, you know, it's that weird feeling. Like it, it seems like just yesterday, but then again, with what's happened in the past couple of years, especially in the last year, it's like a long time. Like three years is, it's a pretty good chunk of time. Like it, it, it seems like a long time and then it, it doesn't, you know, at the same yeah. time, it's very strange. Yeah. But, but yeah. Um, You've said this too, Jerry, like, you're like, I don't even have fucking time to think about bourbon. <laughs> I got too really. much other shit going on. Yeah, I got, dude. you know, I mean, you're probably, I don't want to, you know, you're probably busier than, than all of us right now yeah i don't know i can't i imagine i know i'm busy i don't know if i'm busier than you guys but i know i'm pretty busy yeah yeah i mean it's just that the the scope of life has yeah dude expanded <laughs> yeah dude there's like nine of us in this house dude <laughs> wow you know? and, yeah uh, and then we're dealing with the county and you're gonna build a house shit. we're gonna build a house yeah how's that feel is that weird not yet. <laughs> Talk to me when my dad's like, yo, we're going to frame this. And I'm like, no, we're not. I think we're going to, we're doing all kinds of shit, dude. But right now Megan's dealing with like the architects. She's, she just put the um, paperwork out to the County where they send everybody a letter saying that we're going to build a guest house on this property. And mm -hmm. so and that'll get approved because we've already gotten uh, our two neighbors that are nearest to us have already been like, yeah, the dude that lives like behind us where we're building closest to, he's a contractor and he gave us a hookup with his architect. So everybody's down. We're just waiting for the county to put it out. And now we bring out a surveyor to uh, make a, a site map. And then Megan's already got the site map like 90% made. She just needs to get all the gradation, you know, like where our slopes are so they can come even it all out. And then we're going to then we talk to the architect and get the plan and then we put down the pad and then from there it just starts rolling dude yeah do hmm. your dirt work and then put your pad in and then yeah you're off to the races man That's yeah dude crazy. i mean we're like right at the edge of it right so it's and but other than that i mean with you know not to get too deep into the money part but with the loan where my dad is getting this loan and we have this whole thing worked out where we're paying off the mortgage but a part portion of the loan goes to remodeling this house we're in now too so there's a lot of sweat equity going into this house and that house. Right. So I'm like, he's got me doing shit around the house. All, they just bought a trailer and I was supposed to stain it today, but it's too cold. It's cold and windy today. I don't know how it is in, in Phoenix, Cody. It was super windy today. I was yeah. going to do a bunch of stained stuff myself today. And uh -huh. I was like, woke up this morning, like, nope, not happening today. Yeah. And the weatherproofing is like, yo, it, it can't get under like 50 degrees for 48 hours. And it's supposed to hit like 37. I'm like, dude, dad, let's just wait till Tuesday when it's in the eighties and I'll just yeah. start it in the morning and we'll just get it rolling, you know? But yeah, dude, I'm out there in a cowboy hat on a tractor, like clearing out fucking prickly pears and shit all day. It's crazy, dude. It's like so different than my normal life was in Eugene, yeah. you know? Yeah. yeah um uh, give me a call when you need some painting done homie. yeah i will dude i absolutely will <laughs> make it and i did some but i know you know some shit so i'm gonna hit you up yeah yeah i got i mean i i i have some equipment and shit i got i got you know i mean instead of going to the like i, I might be able to save you some time and money that way too i have a lot of stuff that you know already on hand or whatever so oh good to know yeah yeah we plan on doing all the painting interior and exterior and we plan on doing like the molding crown molding no not the crown molding yeah. but the floor molding and stuff trim outs, and, yeah all the trim. yeah and the floors are stained concrete so we're not having any nice. tile yeah, or that's, that's yeah. the way to go dude for sure yeah. stained concrete's the way yeah rather than, yeah, you know rather how that than trim work goes dude i've done a fair amount of trim work that stuff it looks real easy until yeah. you do it it's a lot of is fun, it man. pain in the ass all right well i'll let you know dude i'll be like you just, yo you know, we made a mistake i mean just just you know there's there's so many videos on youtube and stuff like i've had to i've had to like consult youtube in the middle of a work day before just like on how to do certain corners and yeah if there's any like tips and tricks and stuff and you'll you'll learn as you go it's it's frustrating, but it's fun. Like at the end of the day, and it's a good skill to kind of have in your yeah. back pocket too. Like to to do those things yourself. Um, eventually, like I don't know, I you save a lot of money doing it if you yeah. can, if you can hang in there and do it. Like you'll save yourself thousands of dollars, literally. So, That's what we got to do. Yeah, yeah because our budget it. is yeah. So we'll see. I mean, this is but you know juggling that in a house with my parents are in recovery. So they're yeah. both sober, you know, 
And then and Danny and Ann Rose, they don't drink to excess. You know, Danny's got a huge <clears throat> bourbon collection. I was telling John, he's got this enormous bourbon collection because he actually sells them. Yeah. He gets like rare Pappy and Rip Van Winkles and sells them to his on the internet. He's part of a community. And so he's got like a fucking closet full of fucking bourbon in there, but it doesn't like, I don't think about it like in a temptation way. I'm just like, good for him, dude. Like he's, you know, I can take it out and be like, oh, this is a nice bottle of Elijah Craig. Good for you, you know? whatever you, you know you your folks your folks drink wine with dinner and stuff like that now do they oh still? yeah not mine codas no yeah. oh yeah for sure yeah i mean i i'm not i'm not even gonna like i i'll, I'll have i mean i'm i'm a little bit like i said i'm my my plan's a little bit different I, i've gotten mm -hmm. to the point where like i'll i'll try the wine i taste the wine like all really the time, especially if my mom buys a new bottle or something mm -hmm. i'll take like an ounce or a couple of mouthfuls Trip out. And, you know uh -huh. it's not for me like I know you're looking at me funny, John. I see the look on your face right now. Like, you know, I, podcast over. I, <laughs> I'm glad but, you're here, man. You're my friend. No, the, the, the thing is about it that I, I mean, um, I, I never, I don't know. I don't, I don't want more than that. There's, there's a certain mm -hmm. thing like with me, it's, it's like, you know, I, I, I didn't want it to be like, you can never, ever you can't even taste wine ever again. Like I, I don't subscribe to the fact that if one little drop of alcohol passes these lips, like it's over for me and I have no control and, and mm. I'll just go off the deep end and fall off a cliff because one little drop of wine hit my tongue. Like, mm. no, that's not, that, first of all, that's, I don't know. It just doesn't make any sense to me that way. And second off, like if you have a really nice steak, which I'm capable of, you know, of really chefing up, you know, I mean, mm -hmm. I'm nationally ranked on the grill and stuff like that. And my mom is an extremely great cook, you know, and it's just like, there's something about that mouthful of really good red wine with the steak that I don't, I don't, I don't feel like I need to not have that. What I need to do is not get totally wasted. And what mm -hmm. I need to do is not even have a glass of wine. I don't need a glass. Right. Uh, a couple of mouthfuls with that, with that perfect bite, like the one, the, the bite of steak that's right in the middle, you know, mm -hmm. the one that's like rare and tender, like there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, for me. Right. Right. No, man, I didn't, I mean, I'm, I'm surprised. I didn't know, but I'm, but I'm also like, we've had m multiple discussions about sobriety, about recovery, about your perspective on it my perspective on it like yeah i wouldn't i wouldn't fault you and i know that if you felt i would i would assume and i would i would say like if you felt like there was a problem ever again you can always just give me a call you know that right, right. but um i mean it's all that's just you knowing yourself right right and yeah. i yeah. In so it only happened twice in early recovery where I had a sip of something and like my whole body lit up and it was like on fire. My face was on fire, my chest was on fire, like everything. It was like it was like a button got pushed and everything really? lit up. Uh huh. This wow. was once from a straw taste from like yeah. some fucking strawberry whiskey drink that oh. dude made. It like it was like I was like two months into it and the my old bartender friend slid it across the bar and he's like, taste this. I just made this. And it was instantaneously like, I didn't even think about it. And I just picked up and I took a straw taste and wow. everything lit up and I felt really uncomfortable. And I was like, Oh shit, I got to go. And I just went yeah. home. And then it happened again with some butterscotch pudding that I had that had actual <laughs> really? scotch in it. Yes. Seriously. It oh, was at, it was at work. The pudding. And they were like, here, try this butterscotch pudding. And then they're like, and I was like, scotch in there and i was like and i got the same super flushed feeling like i don't know if i got super red not like when i used to drink but yeah i was like oh man huh. so the fact that that doesn't happen to you on an ounce of wine i mean there's gradations to this whole thing that, that's what i was thinking when you were talking coda is there's gradient there's degrees there's gradations degrees. whereas yeah. john like will eat pudding and wake up naked in a hotel room <laughs> well you know and what i'm saying like that yeah, I, and John, you've said it before, and I and I think you're right. Which is not only, I mean, you you had an allergic reaction. I mean, you know yourself well enough to know that, and you I've heard you describe it that way several times. And I remember, you know, of all the years that we drank together too, that 
just just to see you like uh, certain things would like i remember when you drank gin dude you practically break out like you would have oh like these God. massive skin reactions and like yeah everybody would be like john are you feeling all right man like i remember that like you had some kind of allergic reaction mm -hmm. to certain things like mm -hmm. and, and and i remember and that i will too. say that i never tried that and i never tried the, the like the ounce of wine or the mouthful of wine thing until recently like this this was probably like as recent as probably six or eight months ago or like mm -hmm. over the sum this summer mm -hmm. that i was like i'm gonna try it you know i want a taste of this wine or whatever so i didn't do it right away and i right. think that has something to do with it too like i didn't i didn't mess around with it kind of waited until things were a lot more settled down a lot more secure and i knew a lot more what was going on like in my head and where i was at with everything mm -hmm. you know before i would try something like that you know um, so yeah i mean it definitely kind of knowing where the boundary is i guess mm -hmm. but but yeah with you i definitely see that the allergic thing and especially in those first two months like i think if i would have tried a mouthful of wine in the first two months i probably would have had the same kind of thing happen like yeah lighting up and being like <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's yeah i mean the neural pathways are still there the, mm -hmm. the, the monkey is still there he may be sleeping but he's still there like at yeah. this point the monkey's kind of dead you know at least that's the way i like to think of it you know <laughs> you got a dead monkey in your brain yeah yeah kind of, you know, <laughs> it's he's like either either that or just like in a in a very very deep coma at this point mm -hmm. so no man i mean i don't i don't begrudge you in the slightest and yeah. i think i think it's absolutely important it's just a, it's on a spectrum right i mean this yeah. shit is not the same for everybody and it's not right 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 i mean it, no i absolutely agree with you it's not i mean to, to paint it black or white does it an injustice you mm -hmm. know we're all we all have subtleties we're all different human beings like for me i don't even think i think about it but i don't think about it like john like i don't because i've had like a uh, flan with with cognac on it and didn't even just ate the flan you know but mm -hmm. to me it's like it holds no luster anymore so i'm like right. well, what's the use like even a i never you guys know me i never liked wine anyway so to me right. a mouthful of wine is whatever but i could keep it with bourbon it just doesn't hold the same promise or luster or like because mm -hmm. i've even like without even thinking i'm like yeah alcohol tastes like shit you know <laughs> what if i just said that recently i'm like it all tastes <laughs> like shit to me yeah, you know, but that's, but, that's the funny to me. thing too. Is occasionally, like my and my mom got a couple of bottles of wine that were from like 2019, and they were whites, and I tasted it, and just like, oh, this is shit. Like I didn't mm -hmm. even like I just mm -hmm. put it down, and even the mouthful that I had didn't even finish. You know, it's kind right. of like, you know, it's it's weird, but but yeah, it has to it has to be <laughs> like a, a certain thing. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's, it, it, I, I hear what you're saying though. Right. My, well, and, my and, cons go ahead. Sorry. No, no. And, and like a hard liquor is the same way. It's like, I don't right. even want to, I don't even want to mess. There's no reason to, it doesn't add anything to the dining experience for right. me. Right. It doesn't add anything to like, um, even, you know, I just, it, it, all it is, there's everything to do with negative, like wine's kind of a different animal. I really do think that there's mm -hmm. some alchemy that happens with food. Um, and with the general experience of eating a meal, hard alcohol is a totally different thing. It's one purpose and one purpose only, in my opinion. So what is right. that purpose? <laughs> well, to, to make you feel a certain way. I mean, right, just, right. I mean, it's, it's, you know, not necessarily to get like all the way hammered or whatever, but it's to, you know, it's to make you feel a certain, it's to alter mm -hmm. you in a certain way. Yeah. Yeah. It has flavors and yeah, it has this and it has that, and it has an experience to it, but that experience is to alter your consciousness, basically. Yeah. It's to alter where you're at. It's to loosen you up or whatever. It's not. It's not really to enhance food or enhance. Right. You know. Well, and this brings up so, and I'm fascinated. Um, I'm actually, you know, Jerry and I are uh, going to be reading a book. I just started this book called Never Enough. Uh, and if you're interested, if you want to pick up a copy, we're going to record a podcast in a few weeks about it. Oh, another, another of, book review. If you want to do a book club, <laughs> if you want to be part of the book club. But um, one of the things is they were talking about, there's two different um, two different ways people become addicted to alcohol, right? Basically, either you're predisposed or you fucking drink a lot and then you just become addicted, right? So, so. I would say that I was predisposed, like it was in my family, it was in my blood, I had those immediate reactions. 
it could be, and we don't have, I don't mean we, but you, you could have been somebody who doesn't have that, but you just fucking really hung out with people maybe and drank a bunch. And so then it just became a habit rather than it being something that you were predisposed with. I don't know how you feel about that. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I mean, I, I although, I mean, neither, neither one of my parents are, are, are real big drinkers, but I do mm -hmm. have it both sides of my family is the thing. So I, okay. I, I can't say, you know, with any certainty that it's one way or the other. However, um, I think that it's probably a little bit of both of those things, really. Yeah. Um, maybe like you were saying to certain degrees, we all have both of those things kind of hitting, I think. And, and it just depends on where you fall on the spectrum, whether it's one way or the other, maybe a little bit more of this one, a little bit less of that one. But mm -hmm. I think that to a certain extent, we all have both of those factors. Anybody that has any kind of thing with addiction probably has both of those things going for them. Mm -hmm. um, whether well, and I think that, you know, three years of sobriety has got to give you some perspective on just, even just in general, how you want your days to be and that you're not going to go like, oh, well, I'm just going to go get fucked up. Now, you know, we hear about it all the time, stories of relapse and people who have years and years and years and decades and they fall off. But, but I mean, I imagine that at this point you're kind of going like, okay, I understand what it is. I understand what I don't want, what I do want. And that this ounce of wine, not even a glass of wine with a steak is I'm having this to enhance my dining experience not to black out tonight yeah yeah that's that's the thing is i mean for for me for me the goal is is kind of like you know it's it's not to um put too fine a point find a point on it it's like my my goal is to not get fucked up you know so mm -hmm. if i have an ounce of wine with my steak it's not it's not counter to what's happening with me in fact you know a lot of times it's it's a conversation between me and my mom like what do you think of this like Mm -hmm. This tastes like rat piss, you know, or like, <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah. My mom will be like counterpoint, you know, whatever. You're like, yeah, it's definitely got a rat pissy kind of, you know, ammonia to it or whatever. But yeah, and by the way, the other thing that I found out, like, not only it was 2019, 2020, really bad years, like in general, but do do not buy wine from 19 or 20. Absolute garbage. Like every bottle that my mom has gotten from 19 or 20 garbage it's all got that covid in it it's got, it's know, got that covid <laughs> I'm, I'm telling you every mm. month you know my mom drinks a lot of white wine with with meals and stuff because we have a lot of chicken and poultry and pork and stuff like that and like every bottle that she's gotten of white wine from 2019 or 20 is like you know it's all it's good for is is rinsing the pipes in the sink with man it's just huh i you know this was not this is not how i how i had imagined today's conversation was going to go oh, yeah. but yeah, i'm what are we what are we what am i doing yeah. <laughs> it's fine no, no 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 podcast telling them about wine. <laughs> no but i mean but again i think it's it's not a it's not a binary thing for everyone right we have well, i have several people who have reached out to me who drink regularly who listen and um i think that there's a certain um amount of value to not only like the solitary um, self-assessment and introspection and not like the, not like the stuff that, you know, we, we sometimes joke on the podcast Coda and I'm sure you've heard it. Jerry talks about you like thumbtacking the dead flower up to the wall and just kind of laying on the floor and staring at it. And like, you know, like, the... yo, it's cause Coda's room had nothing on the walls except for one <laughs> rose, like thumbtack to the wall. I remember yeah, that's I, living with it. I, it's it's not like I stared at it and like wrote wrote golf poetry in my no <laughs> no not at all that's not how I was framing it I no, framed no, no. it more like Coda just like slept in a room and he was like <laughs> this looks nice bam <laughs> and then just like passed out well and my my point is that and for me too the idea of you know self assessment and introspection has changed dramatically. And I look hmm. at I look at it when I was drunk and doing it. I was usually just lamenting my fate and yeah. miserable, right? And now yeah. I'm like constructively looking at ways like, oh, so this is a problem. How do I fix it? Or, oh, I don't feel great today, but 
but that'll pass or, oh, I feel really good. I should really take advantage of this. And, and so it's more about there. It feels more constructive these days than it ever did when I was drinking. But I think out of the three of us, and I don't want to necessarily speak for Coda, but I think out of the three of us, you go in on, on the deepest dives of self-assessment. I think okay. I do. I really think you take these deep John, ex, these deep sea explorations of yourself. More, I, I more so with that yeah yeah more so than i do you know like in this i kind of face value a lot of shit and then i do the deep explorations if it's something that's really bugging me mm -hmm. and everything to me at this point especially my recovery is kind of face value shit i'm just like mm -hmm. how do i feel this morning i have a headache you know or i feel i'm in a bad fucking mood why am i in a bad mood so i don't go like john you get you get pretty deep which isn't a negative thing it's just the way that you process is a lot different than I can't speak for Coda, but the way I process is very different than the way you process. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I would definitely agree with that. And 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 also, it's kind of John. You're you're a little harder to read. You're you're better at sort of just kind of you, when things are bothering you, you kind of have a tendency to sort of, you know, just really. Um, you, you don't let on whereas jerry if something's bothered him like he's just it's all right salty, here you know like he's salty i mean yeah, right you, that's you know that something is wrong because uh -huh. everything you know i mean you're you're gonna you just you're gonna know it like and whereas <laughs> you like something that could be eating away at you and you've got a smile on your face and you're going about your day and like you don't really let on until yeah. something happens and you just kind of explode or at least mm -hmm. that's the way you used to be yeah um, I, I see that, and, and i think it's good that you sort of you know you go on those like Jerry says, deep dives because, and, and I do it too. Like Jerry was saying, I do, if something's really bothering me, I will, I'll, I'll, if I can't get to sleep or something, or if it's really something, that's the only time that I get in there and tear things apart and say, okay, what's going on? Mm -hmm. Why, why is this? Why, why am I unhappy? Why am I, you know, why, why can't I sleep? Why can't I, you know, and then and I'll, you know, it usually doesn't take me a whole lot of time to figure out what's going on because like that's my I'll, I'll get like laser focused on it like okay what's the problem here just like and I, I'm sort of like that with cars and stuff like or, or, or stuff at work or like it's a problem I'm going to solve it as fast and as most as efficiently as, as I can I'm not going to dwell there I'm just going to get in and fix it mm -hmm. which is you're just like I'm going to go in there and I'm going to wait around for a while like I'm going to I'm going to go yeah. over here and I'm going to check that out too while I'm here, you know, like. <laughs> yeah, there's a whole box of notebooks from the last four years in the class. I know, I know there is, a, but you're thorough though, and that's not a negative thing. It's Russell, just our, I appreciate our, yeah. You're incredibly thorough. I'm not thorough. I'm like, turn it mm. over once and I'm like, it's fucking done. I don't need to touch that again for 10 <laughs> years. And then it festers and then I get on the podcast. And I'm like, I'm done doing this podcast, you know, or whatever I know, it is. You were Coda had some uh, had some thoughts about your saltiness a couple weeks ago. I was like, let's ago. make yeah. with the glug glug and the oh, wah wah, salty. dude. dude so I salty. Was, what was really it the, salty. And, and the and the the letter for that day was perfect too. It was like I. It's like it's not you. It's me. I think it was or something like that. It's like yeah, perfect man. Perfect yeah, podcast dude. for Jerry to just get on and be salt shaker These all over the thing, man. Poor people are listening, trying to go into recovery, and I'm over here fucking being a grouchy motherfucker about it so funny oh by the way my dad wanted to give us some input he said that um yes oysters make pearls not clams apparently you and i were talking about building a pearl of resentment and we kept saying clams and my dad came home no. he's like listen to the podcast and drive home just want to let you know don't take it personal, but oysters make pearls, not clams, Geraldo. Yeah, we're, we're, we're a couple of piss clams, aren't we? Yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so I think, and I guess maybe because that works for me, being going on those deep dives, and then I get mm -hmm. really excited, and I'm like, hey, you know what everybody else needs to do? You need to do this. And it's, my excitement can sometimes take over and I don't realize like, well, that doesn't mean that you need to do that or that this person needs to do that. And everybody processes it differently, you know? And if Jerry's going to just flip it over once and then be fine with it for a while, like that's none of my fucking business. Right? I'm also not saying that's the correct way. Either, no, though. it's just, but know. I also don't think that everybody is going to, I mean, I spend like about 30 minutes every day in the notebook. Sometimes whether or not I, sometimes I'm just staring out the window and I don't know what to write. And then I'll be mm -hmm. like, the coffee was good today. 
but you know seriously <laughs> right. right but um so and maybe not that's not for everyone I mean, that's that 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 took me, that took me three years to get to that point for almost four years to get to a point where i was going to actually put mm -hmm. that put that work in and like that's not for everyone so, it's, it's working for you though right i mean do you feel like it's working yes yes Keep every time i have a problem it, i sit yeah. down in the morning and i go what is your problem today and my big one so um if i may is uh i'm gonna i'm gonna cut out all the fucking sugar for the the month of march because <laughs> Good luck, Look man. At your, your face. Well, see, Cody, you've never, see yeah, you've never had a weight problem uh, in the same way that I have. Not, I'm not saying that you don't have issues with that, but like, you've always been a thin dude. No, and and, and I'm I've I've been trying to. I'll tell you what, man. I, I I'm I'm on a journey right now to cut to cut down on my sugar, and I've been on that journey for about a month, and it's and it's at least as hard as quitting smoking. Really, it's 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 super difficult for me. Mm -hmm. um, but um but yeah no i i've never had a problem with with weight either up until the last year of my life which you know really yeah man yeah like i'm i well i i started i started you know trying to be a little more physically fit this year mm -hmm. it was part of my new year's resolution which i got started on a little bit early but um but yeah, man, like I, I, I got a little spare tire going on and, and for the first time in my life and I was not happy about it. So, you know, it was one of those things where it was, it was bothering me. I figured out it was bothering me. It was slowing me down and I decided to do something about it, you know, not to just sit around and whine about it, but to actually mm -hmm. do something. So, but yeah, then, you know, and, and when you start out like doing physical stuff and you can probably both of you can back me up on this like you can really get down a rabbit hole as far as what um, like exercise and what I mean as far as diet exercise weightlifting you know calisthenics things like this I mean you can really fall down the rabbit hole on any of it like mm -hmm. the running stuff I mean you mm -hmm. can go so many people have so much input for you that it really gets really yeah dude quickly. yeah and 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 so um what was my point here? Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> so, um, like you, you just, uh, you, you can get so lost in that. And, and uh, so what I kind of figured out was like, I needed to cut the sugar out. I mean, if you listen to what people are saying, that's the same thing. Most of them have what, what, in, what they're saying in common is things like stop eating sh raw sugar, stop, you know, exercise more and stop eating sugar and bread, you know, stuff like mm -hmm. that. It's real simple. Cut down on your carbs a little bit, cut down on the raw sugar and move, you know, or move around. So I yeah. went with that. But the sugar thing, you know, I mean, I was sort of getting to the point where I was like heaping teaspoons in every cup of coffee in the morning and realizing like, this is, this is just like an addiction. Like it gets a little bit more every month that goes by, like, mm. and basically I'm desensitizing myself to the sugar. So I'm needing more and more of it all the time. And what does that sound like to me? Well, that sounds like when I used to do heroin a little bit, like, yeah, I need to look into this a little bit more kind of thing. Like I need to sort of mitigate my sugar intake a little bit mm -hmm. here. Everything is pointing that way and everything is sort of flagging that way. So it's kind of like, yeah, but good luck, John. I mean, it's going to be, I'm telling you, it's tough, dude. It's tough to, so, it's tough to wean yourself off it. Or right. It's going to like go cold turkey and like shut it off. Well, so I, here's my thing. And, and I, because I, I cannot, I don't have the, um, I don't have the ability to structure it the way that Jerry does, the way he has been able to do it, where he's able to count nine Doritos or have, you know, one spoonful of M&Ms or whatever it is, right? It's 10 so M&Ms is 100 10, calories, dude. Come on, man. <laughs> easy you just count out 10 and eat the 10 and don't fucking eat anymore it's really not that hard just count out nine doritos and eat those nine fucking doritos See? so for me it's like just and and it got to the point me. right it's not hard for him but i was eating like i was getting the little things at the little market here where yeah. the pokies they're like little generic m&ms and then i was getting the peanuts and i would sit there and they'd eat them but it's not just one little bag it's like a little sack yeah. And so I was like, fuck, dude, this is where this is coming back from that. 
and fucking regular ass peanut butter. And I mean, that's, those are the two big ones, peanut butter and jelly bread and, you know, like some sort of candy or sweets. I went through a phase where I was eating dates and cashews, just fucking sitting down with them. So dude, do you have like a baguette hidden under your bed? (laughs) Are you fucking hoarding food? Like an, like alcohol? I don't need to. You you? You open up that fucking nightstand. I bet you it's full of nuts, dude. Full of right bags that he's describing those little bags from the pokey yeah, right they're yeah. Either all over the place yeah they're there's the empty they're all under the thing he's got like gorp in the fucking under the kitchen sink and shit <laughs> his pillowcase and shit uh-huh so so i just decided right so march 1st is a new month that's usually pretty good i'm starting today just you know give myself a kickstart i'm gonna eat as much fruit as i want not dried fruit because that's kind of the fucking same thing as candy it might as well be yeah right so I'm going to eat as many berries. I'm going to fr- get frozen blueberries and grapes and melon and all that stuff. But I'm just going to c- try and kick all that, you know, processed sugar and okay. the bread probably too. Like no more tortillas, or yeah. just burrito bowls I, and just give it a shot. Right. Good luck, I, man. I don't know because it's because I wasn't I wasn't this heavy before. Right. I mean, I, I gained 20 pounds in the last year, at least probably around there, but. Like I'm not happy with it, and it's difficult. I used to be able to just get down and do 25 push-ups, and it's like that is a fucking chore now. And it wasn't last summer, yeah. so mm. I want to get back to that. And so part of part of the whole is like well, trying to wait, understand. Though, the- but what was different last time? Were you not eating sugar last time? Like so, because I know Rashida was. I'm your ex girlfriend mm-hmm, wasn't mm-hmm. eating sugar. So were you no. on her same diet? What was different last time? what was different is I wasn't, so I wasn't eating sugar. I was counting Mm -hmm. every single calorie, Mm -hmm. but then, you know, when the pandemic hit and there were multiple hits I took last year. Right. 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 Yeah. Emotional and emotional, uh, the, the wildfires, I had two different injuries, both in my ankles and in my Mm -hmm. lower back. Mm -hmm. So all this shit compounded. And then I was just like, one day I was like, I'm so fucking tired of counting every single goddamn calorie it's just a pan of sauteed vegetables i'm fucking done with this and that was around may and it was also around the time i got the job back at the place that makes really awesome pizzas so you're <laughs> like eating the crusts people's yeah, all crusts pizza. you're like you're not gonna take this. <laughs> no <laughs> yeah i mean i would take pizza home i would take food home food that mm-hmm. i didn't cook food that i didn't have control over food yeah that was filled with with oil and butter i mean because that's what makes everything taste good in the fucking restaurant right let's be honest yeah. butter yeah. so so but sugar is my problem not yeah. fat not fat oh, that's, that's actually you know they've dispelled a lot of that stuff about the fat stuff yeah being like super bad for you in fact you know one of the things that i think was was problematic with myself and i think it was problematic with people that get into the fitness and the diet stuff is I know, I know that I, I, I was experiencing stuff that were sort of um, symptoms of low testosterone, mm-hmm. I feel like, like my hair was getting kind of thin. I mean, I was getting, you know, a little chub around the middle and, you know, other things, but, but then, you know, looking into it, it's like, you, you know, you need that fat, the, like the animal fat is really your body. That's what your body turns into things like all the other, um, you know, hormones that keep your body functioning really well. And testosterone in particular, it you have to have a certain amount of fat in your diet or you're not going to make it. You're going to get low, you know, right. so um, as long as you're supplementing your, I mean, as long as you're exercising or moving around or even just taking a walk a day, you don't have to be like some, you know, muscle guy or whatever, some bodybuilder um, to, to, you know, as long as you're doing that, you're going to counterbalance some of the fat that's coming into your diet. It's actually not, they've, you know, sort of dispelled a lot of the myths about yeah. fat being like all fat being bad for you that's not the case um and by the way those guys that you know some of the fitness people and the you know and the the like bodybuilders and super contortionist yoga people like when i look at them and i'm doing some of these deep dives or whatever on fitness and diet like what i'm seeing there is obsession by the way like yeah that's some weird stuff oh yeah you it's know? i was i was watching a video there's a guy i watch who does some weightlifting and he just does it for strength not for show and he's he always and he's like a european dude and he's always like yo if you can see abs like that person's starving 
Like that's that person <laughs> is their body fat is so low that they're literally starving. You yeah. shouldn't be able to see your abs. That's not like a healthy thing, you know? So it made me feel better. Cause I'm like, fuck yeah, dude. I'm <laughs> healthy as fuck, dude. So John, are you going to replace the sweeteners then with like stevia? Or are you just cutting all I think, sweet out of your I diet? Think- well, so I would put stevia in my in my coffee. That was the only place. Today I, I didn't. I live off stevia, dude. Right, but I feel I like fuck. stevia and things like honey, because for me it's it's a behavioral thing. So stevia would just be like it would be trying to hit that same little pra- place in my brain, mm-hmm. you know, that sugar would, or mm. that cigarettes, or that alcohol, or whatever it was. And for me, it was cigarettes was the first one where I was like, there's this little place in my brain that it hits. Mm-hmm. And I was like, it lives, like it literally, I gave it a place in my brain. I don't yeah. know. If that's oh, yeah. Good. And no, it was right dude. over here. Yeah. And so it was like that same little place. It's like, ooh. So I'm just going to be done with the the stevia for a month. I'm going to drink. I drank my coffee black before. I can do it again. That's not bad. If you get good coffee, it's pretty tasty black. But honey is the same thing. I would then, if I, if I keep the honey around, I'll just fucking use it on everything. I started doing that too. When I first, when I first started trying to cut back my sugar in the morning and my coffee, I, Mm -hmm. I started replacing it right away, right off the bat with honey. And then I realized what a, what a same trap thing. that is because i was doing the same thing like yeah, I one of those bears. same thing the mm-hmm. freaking bear was gone in like a week <laughs> <after that morning. laughs> right then you're crushing you know honey bears like fucking cores lights in the in the Seriously, recycle man. bed dude so yeah, and then, I'm, then i'm wondering why i'm getting fat you know it's like dude you're crushing a honey bear like every week dude you're like, yeah you're crushing a birthday cake every two days and a honey right bear cake like, yeah so I think just whole fruit, man. I'm I'm just gonna load up on frozen berries, and I'm gonna get lot. I love melon anyway, and you know. So I mean, that's kind of what I'm gonna. I'll tell you. I'll with. tell you what hits the spot too, man. Tell me. Really nice Please. sweet pineapple, dude. Pineapple is like. Mm, I've been, yo, I've been doing a lot of yeah. pineapple lately, and that shit is when when you get a super sweet one, it'll it'll yeah it, it'll knock that 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 craving right. out big time. Like a so, nice sweet pineapple is awesome. You're I'm working f- farting like a compost heap, dude. Like, <laughs> listen, I don't I mean to interrupt, alone. but I eat a lot of fruit, right? Too, because yes. I'm my smoothie. I eat like at least two servings of fruit every day in the smoothie, and then I eat apple. I try to snack on oranges and apples and plums throughout the day instead of chips and shit. Mm-hmm. But like, literally, I fart like a horse. Like, I'll sit here and fart, and the whole room will smell like a horse farm. I'm like, yo, I'm doing it right. <laughs> like, I. I I'm doing it correct, you know. I, I'm sometimes, fine with not that. all the time. <laughs> sometimes. Sometimes it's rugged if you get too much protein powder <laughs> in that shit, dude. What do you what are you using? Pea powder? What are you? Oh, weighing? peanut butter, peanut butter, peanut butter. powder. Yeah. yeah. And um, chia seeds, dude. I like chia, chia seeds. seeds. Yeah. 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 So I mean, I'm I mean, regular as fuck, but you know, that's that's a whole other podcast. Yeah, about you being regular. Yeah. yeah, I got a squatty. My sister gave me a squatty potty for Christmas, dude, and I. It's the most gangster. I love it. It's the most what's gangster the, what's thing. The squatty potty. I'm, it's I'm like a little kidding. plastic like uh, stool that goes under the toilet. So when you sit down to shit, you like put your feet on the stool, so yeah, it the, elevates your legs your, go up. Your legs go up, so you're squatting to shit instead of sitting down. So that oh. everything is straight when it comes out. It's dope, oh, wow. dude. It's dope. I feel healthy. I feel like Asian. I feel healthy as fuck. Like from an Asian country, not you know. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Is that problematic? You know what I, I mean. I don't think so. Yes. Apologies. Um, I was talking I to a guy last. <laughs> no, a guy last night about high colonics and coffee enemas too. But I'm not sure if I'm ready to go down that route. Yo, dude, you just I don't know what you're doing. <laughs> you know, it's California weirdos, dude. <laughs> Cutting out sugar, wearing that shirt, doing yoga. <laughs> recovery podcast holy shit seriously dude. i know i'm california's really done a number on me growing um, your hair up, out man growing your hair out <laughs> um so but yeah i mean that's 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 kind of the plan just for the month of march to just to kind of get a gauge on if that's the problem if that's not the problem then nothing will change and then i'll know right yeah right. you yeah. need to i mean yeah yeah, but it's sure. probably the problem, right, guys? Like, it's probably the fucking sugar. I don't know I'm what your problem care. is, John. <laughs> Come on. I mean, uh, so. I mean, how, how, how long are you doing your planks for is, you know, my other question. <laughs> <laughs> well, are, I got, you, are you planking enough, John? Are you, you got to follow him on social media. You get to see yeah. it all day long, dude. Oh, I Jesus. watched John do these weird curls the other day where he was banging dumbbells into each other in slow motion in a shirt that says, I don't remember what it said. To take cut no the shit. shit 
cut the shit. He had a shirt that said cut the shit and he was doing curls with dumbbells and banging the dumbbells into each other, but it was a slow shit. motion. And it was like a Crystal Gale song. Like oh, John on Instagram is wild shit because he's got it's like radio four heads. Counts. Oh, that's what it is. It's a, there's a Radiohead song called Lift, so that's why I was lifting the oh, weights. Get it? Like, it's a little... Dude, John's it. social media account is fucking crazy. He, like, will edit movies of him running, and then in the middle of the movie, he'll stop and just do push-ups in the road, and then get up and keep running. Like, he's... Okay. It's hilarious. Because I just picture... Dude, do you remember in Tucson, when we lived here, and there was that dude on the east side, that old guy in the satin shorts who jogged yes. every time he saw... That's John, dude. Basically, John has turned into that dude. Oh, oh my gosh. So I'll just be out there with no shirt on. If it's hot, sweaty, I'm running, and then I like need to take a break. So I'll do some dips or do some push-ups for my like run break just on the side of the road. Some people okay. driving by, they're like, check it out. It's fucking Ted Kaczynski. <laughs> it's a Unabomber. So yeah, I, I, I can see you in a couple of years just all leathery and brown, <laughs> like a raisin <laughs> and some satin running shorts, just you know, stopping and dropping and giving you 20 on the side of the road. I admire it. I yeah, honestly, well, cause I don't, I, I don't even take my shirt off running. I just started recently. My mom's mm -hmm. like, you're so fucking white. So white. I just, I'm just, you know, I got, I got over it. And I, I kept thinking because that, that was part of my problem was I was thinking, do I look good? Do I look okay? And I was like, I don't fucking care anymore, man. Like, I don't give a shit yeah. about any of these people. Like who cares if I'm at the stoplight and everybody's staring at me and it's like, it doesn't fucking matter. And then, so I was wearing that cut the shit uh tank top that i have and it says do the work on the back nice. um, you can you can get it it's in my uh, uh instagram uh they're for sale i made them um you made them free. yeah oh, I made shit, it. i'm buying oh, one <laughs> gotta have one i'll send you the yeah. link so you can send get a hoodie if you want you can get a tank top you can get I'm a tank it up Dude. and um but i was like that's what i kept saying to myself was cut the shit john why aren't you out there right now what are you doing you're you're wandering around the house fucking pussyfooting around like go put your shoes on and get out there I and so i wore it dude i'm so fucking in I'm yeah so dude. In. <laughs> i'll send you the link so awesome so then somebody saw me i got something on facebook or on instagram or both and they were like was that you? Did I see you downtown running in the bike lane? And I was like, yeah, the bike lane's nice and smooth and flat. Like that's where it's at, you know? Mm -hmm. And so I, I mean, I just don't fucking care anymore. Right. Like yeah. I'm just tired of like giving a shit. I get, I was so worried. I mean, come on. We were all horribly insecure and terrified and worried about what other people thought of us. Yeah, no. I su I suppose you're right. I mean, I I, I have to agree with you there because I and, and I and I feel you now because of like I, I'm I'm out walking around and and you know my neighborhood and stuff, my conservative Arizona neighborhood and my like my on sale bright bright like fluorescent blue Adidas running shoes and like Adidas pants and and, and a, like a, an old dingy. You know, I, I I know that that all of my neighbors think I'm some weird homo, like weird dude. Like, mm -hmm. what's that guy walking around the neighborhood? He's gonna, you know, bring the kids inside, kind of thing. Like, it's just, I don't care. Like a hobo in running yeah. pants, like just like yo, I'm here to steal a pie on your windowsill. Seriously, yeah, I mean, who yeah, cares, I mean, right? I'm just like so. I mean, care. I'm fucking. I'm gonna be 44. In cut the days. shit john do the cut work the i didn't realize you made those shirts you, you know when, when when you said that too i started laughing so hard that's like one of my brother's favorite sayings is cut the shit so i like not only am i gonna like have one for myself i'll probably order a few of those like for gifts and shit because cut the shit that's like a, so funny man. my family cut the shit's kind of like a mantra dude like, is it pretty, yeah that's great yeah. yeah i didn't I know just, that those are yours that's so funny hey, i love yeah. that you're walking around the house being like yo you didn't do your dips today john get out there in front of that winchels and fucking do it you pussy <laughs> basically and i love doing it that's why i love doing it in front of the donut shop it's kind of like my fuck you to the donut so i'll do like push-ups in front of the donut shop <laughs> or do dips in front of the mcdonald's you know you crazy nice. you no, crazy like i don't need you <laughs> so that's kind of that's what's that's where i'm at in my head you know Dude, well i'm just running around oro valley with no shirt on so they got but good running trails beautiful here. oh yeah. man dude. oro valley they really incorporated here in north tucson it's like it's so different than it was when we were kids when Coda and i were kids there's no, no I, I you know jerry i rolled through there not too long ago i don't remember why the hell i was down. i was uh, i was doing a job down there for with with this one dude that i know he was he had some work or something and we ended up driving all the way we went we went to 
we went all the way down to like uh, Green Valley or something. And then we went up and he had to go back through, we went back through Tucson and we went down Oracle Road all the way and out of, back to Phoenix via yeah. like Oro Valley. We went oh, that wow, way, yeah. Mm -hmm. you know, yeah, that pretty. way all the yeah. way. Mm -hmm. And like we rolled all the way through Oro Valley and I was just looking around just like, holy shit. I couldn't believe how different it was. It was, yeah. and, and that area has always been really pretty, but like, oh man, I, I forgot how pretty it is out there. There are it's trails sweet. everywhere here now, like kept up by the city, like just yeah. whole running trails that go, there's like man. You know, 10 mile running trails and not just one, there's, they're on every like east west block is a running trail that goes from the highway all the way out to the mountains, you know. That's super sweet. And well, yeah, Catalina State Park is out there too, which is, dude, Catalina mm -hmm. State Park is awesome. Like, yeah. The we just hiked of it on your side is fucking yeah. super dope. We dude. just hiked the Push Ridge Trail and then Oh yeah, my, my um, sister and my brother-in-law are all about hiking now. They're outdoors, so I've been actually I never hike, and I've been going with them, and it's been so much. It's beautiful. That's another yeah. good way too, John. Going out. Well, you know, you're out there. Yeah. I think about you when I'm out there because you run those hiking trails, and I'm like, John's crazy, dude. I will well, run I mean, this trail. The hills are your friends. They'll 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 work your glutes. I promise you. Yeah. Like this. <laughs> just got a shiny old Flanders ass, dude. Just so. <laughs> Just like dude, you're the trails in Arizona are not like you don't want to run on the trails here though, dude. They're all rocky and like if you stumble or lose your footing, you're gonna like break a shin or something. You get you're airlifted like, out, you know. Dude. Yeah. What's, <laughs> the, what's the joke? Gnarly. The joke. I don't always roll a joint, but when I do, it's an ankle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've never heard that before. That's funny. So uh, yeah, I mean, I just but the stuff that I saw Jerry posting pictures like smooth flat like that's, on the side of the road right. areas that's where my those looks, are my running those are the running trails yeah, yeah. the hiking trails are different but i'll but come it's down pretty, maybe man. this winter i'm grateful to be here man. it really is nice to be visit. back like Coda was saying earlier in the podcast he's like you know we come back or whatever but like this time coming around it's been so different being here than it has before you know it's been yeah. really positive wait, wait, wait till this summer pal you'll you'll be saying that's what i keep thing. telling my mom i'm like i love it here but we'll talk in august that's all that's my caveat every time we'll talk in august when it's yeah, 112 no, I, it, and it's, like, it's impossible oh, not place. to love this place and and like you know from december all the and, way through until about april may like right it's, it's just the shit and and the same is true on the other side like october november october december it's it's, it's just it's perfect here it, there's yeah. no question about it it's dope and this right now is coming up on my favorite time of the year. Like as soon as the citrus trees start blooming, like it's the shit for like yeah, six weeks straight. It's so like anywhere else in the country is total garbage. This is where you want to be mm -hmm. for that six weeks. Right. And then summer hits and you're like, I'll be anywhere but here. You know? Yeah. Right. And it's flipped right. in Oregon and it's flipped up in like the North. Well, you're yeah. in that weird sweet Sonoma spot where it's like, yeah, things are pretty mild nice right now. Time. Yeah. It's yeah. very temperate. We get some wet rains, but it doesn't get too cold. Uh, it, I'll it'll catch on fire. It gets, <laughs> yes. It catches on fire. So that's, that's going to be an issue <laughs> for, yeah. So that's, that, that poses a different set of challenges, let's say <laughs> to say the least. Um, but yeah, uh, I just, uh, no, I appreciate like Coda, you talking with us and being straight up with things. And like, I'm, I admire it and I'm interested and I'm intrigued and like, you know, you're your own person and you've always, you know, Jerry and I've always said like the program that we prescribe to subscribe to is not for everyone and nor should it. Right. Be. Right. And it's, and everything's yeah. different. And exactly. Yeah. And, and just, just so we're clear here, I, I don't, I don't, you know, I mean, I don't have nothing against any kind of anybody's program, you yeah. know, whatever it may be. I, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm in the same boat with you guys, which is, you know, whatever works, find what, you know, it's funny that the, the link that you sent me, John, for the running warm up, the, the mm -hmm. yoga with Adrian. Yeah. She has this saying, which is find what feels good, you know? Yeah. Um, really, oh, really that's my that. home girl. Mm -hmm. Yeah, dude. Mm -hmm. I mean, she's, she's the shit, right? Like, yeah. yeah. Uh, but, but I love that saying, like find what feels good kind of thing. And, and I've been sort of trying to follow that in my fitness, like sort of quest or whatever, mm -hmm. but, but also, I mean, it works on a lot of different levels, you know, it works on just about any level. And so I like, you know, you, you and Jerry following the, the 12 step, doing the AA thing. I, in fact, like a, a lot of what I do is based on that. If, if I didn't, if I hadn't gone through, you know, going that route, the first six months of my experience, I probably wouldn't be where I'm at today. 
And so right. it sort of is the basis for what I'm doing or what I feel is good for me. Mm -hmm. um, just because I didn't follow all the way through with it, you know, doesn't mean that it's not, you know, that there's not some really, really golden stuff there and that everybody who's even thinking about, you know, this sort of path should at least check it out for sure. Yeah. Like I, I'm, you know, that was one of the first things that both you and, you know, Jerry told me when I, when I first, you know, called you that day three years ago, you know, <laughs> was, was just go to a meeting, you know, which, which was really great advice and excellent. I mean, it really was enough said at that point. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Yeah, I would I wouldn't discourage anybody from you know trying you know in fact I would recommend it. Um, so yeah, yeah. Cool. Yeah, man. Well, I I want to kind of wrap it up here, but okay, I appreciate yeah. you and I respect I respect your opinions and I respect your your approach and I, I always love getting your your perspective on things because I know that Jerry and I have a lot of uh, we can sometimes have a twelve step uh, blind spot. And I always love getting a message from you or getting a phone call. And you're like, by the way, last week, you guys were full of shit. Because <laughs> I, I don't get like that. I don't ever no, get no, the no. text. John gets them. I don't get yeah. them. Probably because well, no, I'm you a don't... fucking solid eat, though, dude. I'm all salty. I'm like, yeah, dude, I, I, I wouldn't. I'm not even I'm, I'm not even trying to touch that fucking can of worms, Jerry. I'm not trying to crack that one. <clears throat> no, but you you you'll keep me honest about, you know, what I say and 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 how well, i say it and, and, I, and I, I appreciate that yeah let's be clear john i i'm not like you're full of shit i don't do no. that okay. come on I'm, I'm way more diplomatic than that yes yes you are no we but you, you know and i'm being hyperbolic but um you do you definitely give me pause to be like hey john you said this but what about this that's another part of it that's another side of it and i was like oh okay and so it's it's important because I get a lot of positive feedback, right? Jerry and I get lots of great messages and people are, are helped by it and they, they appreciate it, but it's always nice to know that like, I can do things a little bit better. I can say things a little more concise or be more intentional in my language and stuff like that, you know, or that I'm missing something. I, so yeah, that's all. No, right on. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so what, what, what was our what john did you want to just uh you know throw out there what what the uh, what the letter was and what our theme oh was yeah you know, or well just... um the the letter today was k which is uh, yeah. becoming the sort of biannual um letter that coda joins us on he yeah, has the last on, three or four on times k. on k <laughs> um but uh I, I i thought knowledge of self and knowledge that's what i wanted to uh to kind of get people's perspectives on you know how they approach things and yeah i just think if we've all got these very different ways of doing it and today it seems to be working right it is yeah, so. yeah. just count out those 10 doritos bro it's not <laughs> fucking hard it's 150 calories you just put 10 down suck all the fucking cheese off of each one just <laughs> a meal of that shit dude that's what i do it Dude, I get these tiny wow. Kit Kats from Megan. I'll count on all three, 130 calories, and I'll suck on each Kit Kat like a lozenge and watch TV. <laughs> I do, man. I just own it because I'm like, yo, I, this is. A, I don't know if it. I'm gonna get another Kit Kat later. You, you should, you should see me with that one ounce of wine, dude. Like, dude, dude just. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I mean, I would just eat the whole <laughs> bag of Kit Kats. No, oh, I that can't, would be I my problem. It, I would just I be sitting at the kitchen table, fucking unwrapping and throwing away, unwrapping. And no, just... I can't do that. I got to run it, though. Everything is a little piece of fuel. That's why I look at it like a little piece yeah. of gas. And I'm going to say, I'm going to run this tomorrow mm. when I get wild. And I do, I run it, run around Oro Valley, no shirt. I'm looking for a cougar. My wife's cool with it. It's all right. <laughs> just stay with the care of. She's going to take care of all of us. Oh. Well, Man, thank you guys. They're, they're anywhere. They're in Oral Valley for sure. Uh, have a great well, day. Have a good March. Yeah. I'm sure I'll talk to you, but happy birthday in advance. Oh, yeah. Happy, yeah, happy yeah, birthday. It's coming up. Too, I'll, yeah, I'll, thank I'll you. Talk to you. Yours, yours, is, yours is what? Yours is Wednesday. this week, isn't it? Yeah, it'll be Wednesday. Is it this? Oh, wow. Yeah, and then know, Coda's yours is what? March. Yours like the 13th or something? Uh, the 7th, Sunday. Damn, I was Sunday. off. All right. All right, text me both your birthdays. All right, and I'm gonna send you guys a link for that shirt. Please dude, do. Yeah, yeah. You, you gotta, right. you gotta send. Like seriously, dude, I'm, I'm, I'm ordering a batch of those, dude. I expect a big, a big order. A big away. shipment. All right. All right. Cool. Man. All right. I'll talk All to right. you guys later. All right, fools. Mm. Thanks again for listening. 
Our music, as always, is by Neglect. You can find more of his stuff at neglect.bandcamp.com. And you can find us on all social media platforms that matter, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. And you can reach us at aisforalcoholic at gmail.com. Talk to you later. Yeah. <laughs>